seems to be the matter, sir. You know dang well what the matter is. I've been chasing you and that highfalutin granddaughter of yours with that warrant and them bills through three counties. Now, you're gonna pay every penny of them bills you left behind, or you're gonna spend the next 50 years in the calaboose. Sir, Colonel Robert Fairchild is not accustomed to being addressed as a vagrant and a lackey. I find your gross insinuations a little bit more than I can bear. I am a member of Southern aristocracy, sir. Mister, I don't care if you're Stonewall Jackson. You're gonna pay them bills you and your granddaughter ran up, or you're going straight to jail. Grandfather, I believe I'm going to faint. Yeah. What seems to be the trouble? Uh, who might you be? Oh, I happen to be a friend of Colonel Fairchild's and his granddaughter. Well, let's hope you're a good enough friend to bail him out, because if you ain't, they're going with me to jail. Um, what's the amount? $122.68 exactly. I believe that this will cover it. Oh. And, uh, here's a bit more to, uh, cover your expenses. Oh, well, <laughs> Yeah, I reckon so, mister. Uh, hey, Colonel, you got some mighty good friends. Yeah, and rich, too. Well, I thank you a lot, mister, and so long. So long. I told you to keep out of trouble. Geller, it's not all Grandpa's fault. I... Shut up. Oh, come on now, Jack, my boy. You can't possibly be inferring that Colonel Robert Fairchild is... Uh... Don't try that corn-pone charm on me, you old fraud. You just shut up and listen. Now, I'm on to something. Something pretty big this time. There's a horse named Clancy that's owned by some hotshot kid on a big spread just the other side of Virginia City. Now, I've been watching him work out, and the horse and the kid are pretty good, but I think we can take them for plenty if we work it right. Magnificent. Splendid, my boy, splendid. Yeah, well, there's only one hitch, though, uh, Fairchild. I think maybe you know the kid's father. Uh, what's his name? Who is he? His name's Cartwright. Cartwright? I don't... Ben Cartwright? Yes? Why, of course I know him. <laughs> That was sure a good ride, Joe. Real good ride. Fastest mile I ever saw a horse run, Joe. Well, if I could just get something to run him against, I think his horse would beat anybody. <laughs> Kids and two beautiful horses. Yeah, they surely are. Hey, I thought you were going to let him out there for a minute. Not on your life, little Joe. You'll see Jeff Davis run when we race and not before. Oh. Tires out easy, huh? Is that why he got that pancake on his back instead of a saddle? <laughs> that saddle. 
saddle is the latest thing in racing equipment. Standard in all Eastern races now. Well, maybe, but I still don't see how you ride with your knees up around your chin. You'll see when we race. That is, if you'll ever get gumption to race your Clancy against my Jeff Davis. What do you think, Clancy? Come on. You know, that uh, horse of little Joe is Clancy. He's out of the Truxton strain. That's Andy Jackson's champion. Oh, well, about Andy. But Jeff Davis has bloodlines, too, you know. Oh, he's a good-looking horse. Uh, you know, Patty Lou is just dying to match him. And maybe Clancy there might be just the horse to find out how good Jeff Davis really is. Well, we could find out that way, I'll tell you. Yeah, a race between them mightn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Hey, that's a good horse. Good. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I do believe it's uh, mint julep time. <coughs> yes, sir. A horse race is a thing of beauty. Surely is. Mm -hmm. Hey, Patty Lou. Better pull that blanket up over his ears. You don't want that old crow bait to catch cold. Little Joe, go walk under a snake's belly. <laughs> Dear me, is it bad, horse? Nah, it's just a little case of the Wally Glove. Well, turpentine. Lemon extract and honey. Nothing better to cure the... Wobbly gloves. Hey, uh, how'd the workout go anyhow? Fine. Little Joe says he'll race his Clancy against my Jeff Davis. Ain't that just like that, Little Joe? Won't up a race first thing. He's liable to be surprised this time, though. We ain't had a gal around here that could set a saddle like you. <laughs> well, I do thank you. As a matter of fact, we ain't had many around here as pretty as you either. Horse Cartwright, I do believe you're sweet-talking me. Would you mind if I was? I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Sorry, fellas, it looks like another winner. <laughs> I keep telling you, poker is not my game. Will you excuse me, gentlemen? Yeah, sure. One thing I like is a good loose. You'll never find a better one. Yeller never won a hand or anything else. Hey, come to think of it, you're right. I'm starting to feel real bad taking his money. Yeller? There's enough food in there for a week. Is everything shaping up, Governor? Just keep this horse in condition. When the time comes, I'll let you know. I was just going to give him his morning workout. Give me a leg up, will you, Governor? How did Clancy do today, son? Uh, he's getting better every day, Colonel. Uh, no horse around to convene him. Oh, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Your Patty Lou has a horse, too, you know. I reckon we'll just have to set a date for that race, Ben, don't you think? What do you say, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I'm sure for it, Pa. Yeah, come on, Paul. The whole town's excited about it. Wait a minute, now, don't, don't all come at me at once. I didn't say no. Set your date. Have your race. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. It is all right with you, isn't it, Grandfather? Why, of course, my dear. Yeah, what harm can come of good, clean fun? Well, horse, 
Shall we go and have a look at that ailing dog of yours? Anytime you're ready, Colonel. Yeah, I promised the uh, horse that I'd give him a little assistance. Daughter, will you join us? I'd love to, Grandfather. Oh, that Colonel. Race horses, sick dogs. I guess he's an authority on just about everything. Yes, he's quite a man. He had a lovely wife. Big plantation. Acres of the most beautiful bluegrass. So what happened? I don't know. I don't know if anything happened. I don't like to ask him. I just have a feeling he's lost it all. Where's your granddaughter? Uh, well, she's tending Jeff Davis. Didn't I tell you I want both of you here when we have a meeting? Well, now, we must be circumspect, you know. Those Cartwrights are no fools. What have you done about the race? Yeah, well, we're working on it. Patty Lou and I are working on it. Well, what's taken so long? Well, now, don't you worry, Geller. The race will be soon. Ben Cartwright is arranging the whole thing. Good. I've got the yokels primed and ready. I've been playing cards with them, dropping a few hundred. They don't believe I could win a two-horse race if I owned both horses. Me. Hey, and don't you forget your promise. The Cartwrights are not to be hurt. Well, you just remember your end of it. I don't want any more slip-ups like El Paso. Oh, now that was an accident. You were drunk, Fairchild. And your granddaughter was mixed up with some bronc buster. Well, a child is entitled to be in love. Don't give me any excuses. I'm telling you, another slip-up like that, it's going to be your last one. And some people you like and some people you don't like. I <clears throat> Them all out? He doesn't train too well. This horse is going to take a whole lot more work before he's ready for Clancy. Just you watch him in the race. Yeah, well, don't you go underestimating Clancy, our little Joe. I'm not underestimating him. But Jeff Davis here now, he's just born to win, that's all. Looks like you made a friend there. We did help her to get well, didn't we, Hoss? Yeah. Had a little about this race. I sure wouldn't want to see you get hurt. Oh, that's the sweetest thing. You know, you and your brother and your pa, you've become very dear to me, you know that? Well, I tell you, we, we sort of took a fancy to you and your grandpa, too. Yes, sir. Salubrious. That's just the very word for this climate. <laughs> that's a good word. <laughs> yes, sir, it's a fine, healthy place, that's for sure. Yeah, you've made a fine spot for yourself here, Ben. Uh, I'm right proud of you. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. Colonel, how much do you like it here? Well, I'll say I like it just about as much as any place I've ever seen. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I don't mean to pry, you know that. Had a thought occur to me last night. <clears throat> well, let's hear it, Ben, let's hear it. How would you like to settle down here? Here? On the Ponderosa? Well, why not? There's all the room in the world for everybody and then some. Got a fine cabin the other side of uh, Northeast Pasture, where you could settle down there and 
raise your thoroughbred horses and make yourself a good life, a fine life. Well, Ben, that's it. That's right kind of you, to offer us a home and a place to settle down. Well, I've never forgotten what you did for Horses' mother and me. When we were on our way out of here, she was so sick and had no money, no friends, and until you and your wife. Yes, I remember. Uh, but Ben, I, I think maybe I ought to talk it over with Patty Lou first. Uh, you see, we were considering uh, San Francisco and uh, forgetting all about the horse race. And, uh, ben, I, I, I just don't know how to thank you. Well, I do know how you can thank me. By accepting the offer. And anyway, you're not going to wiggle out of that horse race. Little Joe would raise you from here to San Francisco. <laughs> Talk to Patty, though. You shall do that, Ben. I'll do that. Queens. Queens. I don't know why I can't win. Just one hand. I'm sorry, fellas. You're lucky, O'Leary. I've sat here all day with second best hand. All day long. Gentlemen. How you doing, Joe? Hey, Joe. Ah, not too bad. How about you? Hey, y'all going to the race? Wouldn't miss it. You, uh, wouldn't care to lay a little bet, would you? You gonna daylight that Tennessee horse, or you wanna lay some odds, or what? Did you say a Tennessee horse? Yeah, Tennessee running horse. Has that horse got a name? Mm-hmm. Name's Jeff Davis. From Tennessee? With a name like Jeff Davis? <laughs> Well, I don't think I'd mind putting a few dollars on him. Uh, well, wh wh what do you call a few dollars, mister? How about a hundred? You got yourself a bet. Good. Hey, George, I've never seen you guess right yet, Geller. If Geller's back in Jeff Davis, I'm going along with little Joe. Hey, that's for me, too. I'll take some of that money, say 250. I got 200 clients you'll outrun Jeff Davis. Well, you're all covered. I'll take any amount on Jeff Davis. As a matter of fact, I, uh... Might even raise my bet. But then I don't figure you got much uh, cash behind you. Yeah, well, I got enough to take you on, mister. How about 5,000? Well? Hmm? Oh. <clears throat> sure. Sure, you got yourself a bet. Deal. <clears throat> oh, what's the matter, Sonny? You uh, want to back out of the bet? Huh? Uh, no, no, I just. <clears throat> I'm just gonna pay for my beer. <laughs> Is that what you call a friendly horse race? Well, now, look, you listen now for a minute, Bonnie. You'd have done exactly the same thing if, uh, if you'd have been in my place. This Geller was so cocksure... I don't care how cocksure uh, of himself anybody is. Call off that bet. I can't do call that. Call it off. Call it off right now. Right now. Where are you going to get $5,000? 5000 Well, I I have some of the money saved. I saved a little... Oh, money. really? You got some of the money? How much of the money have you got saved? I got about uh, two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars isn't that wonderful, little Joe? You've got two hundred dollars. That means you've only got to get about forty-eight hundred dollars. Well, I, I, I thought you could give me a little advance on my wages. Look, Paul, I put a clock on that Jeff Davis, and there ain't no way he can outrun old Clancy. Clancy'll outrun him every day of the week and twice on Sunday. What's that got to do with what we're talking about? Tell you what it's got to do with it. There ain't no way little Joe can lose. That's what. I'll tell you what, Joe. I'll put all my money in with you. Oh, fine. How much money have you got? <laughs> I've got. Uh, $180. $180? Well, that's that's quite remarkable. You've got $180, you've got $200, that makes $380. Where are you going to get the... Cut, call this thing off. Well, now, look, it's, it's not just Hoss and I. I mean, there's a lot of upstanding people. There's Fairley, O'Leary. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What have Fairley and O'Leary got to do with this? Well, they're, they're betting on Clancy. They got about $500 bet on him. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Now you've got the whole town betting on this race. 
<laughs> Just great. Howdy, Ben. Little joke. I don't. All right, Clem. Uh, uh, Clem, uh, you go along with us, huh? Excuse me, fellas. Hey, Ben, good to see you. This here's Jack Geller. Geller? Mr. Cartwright? Maybe now we can do some real business. I think the business you have is with my son here. He doesn't back out of things, does he? No, he doesn't back out of things. It's $5,000 here. You can count it and hold a bet. The other party's ready to put up. Here's my $5,000. Well... Well, here I understand you and the boys are back in Clancy. Little Joe, is that right? Well, we just want to get in on a good thing. <laughs> we figured Little Joe will win by a mile. Yeah, I think you could just do that. <laughs> if you feel that way, how about doubling the bet? Well, a uh, $5,000 bet is fine with me. Thank you. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Don't you think the horse is any good? All right, we'll double that bet, Sheriff. You come with us to the bank, I'll get you the other 5,000. Let that be a lesson to you. Let it be a lesson to me. Patty Lou, this horse is going to look great. Yes, I know. What's the matter? Something wrong? I wish I'd never gotten little Joe into this. You, uh, you heard about all the betting in town, huh? It's all my fault. Oh, it ain't. Little Joe and Paul are both big boys. Besides, little Joe figures he's going to beat you anyhow. But he hasn't got a chance. I wouldn't be too sure about that unless you got some idea of making old Jeff Davis sprout wings or something. Uh, did your grandpa mention to you the proposition that Paul made him about you two staying here on Ponderosa with us? Yes. Oh, Hoss, you're the nicest person in the whole world. You all are. Well, we had... Hey, who are you, coming with me? Yes, Grandpa. I promised Grandpa I'd ride up to the lake with him. Well, you go right ahead. We'll finish this little talk later. Later, Yes. Bye for now, huh? So long, Colonel. It's the one to call him Lightning, Governor. He was great today. Well, just so he's that way tomorrow for the race. He will be. All right, let's get back to the barn. Give that die time to set up. Whoa. Is anybody there, Patty Lou? No, they must be running lightning. Now remember, Grandpa, I'm to do the talking. <laughs> Well, now, Patty Lou, I think it'd be much better if you let me do the talking. You know how you two clash. We have to stand up to him. We have to make him listen this once. Yes, yes, we, we do indeed. And I have every intention of doing that very thing. It means our future, our lives, and our happiness, Grandpa. I, I know that. I know it. Larcher, get the die. I want you to put the die on that horse now, Fairchild, so it'll look more natural by tomorrow. Uh, just a minute, Geller. My granddaughter and I wish to consult with you. Hey, Snowden, get a blanket on that horse and cool him off. Sure, Governor. Grandfather and I have something to discuss with you. Yes. Well, now, the only thing we've got to discuss is that die job on Lightning. You better make sure it's a good one, because I don't want anybody to suspect that he's not Jeff Davis. Yes. Well, I'll do that, of course, but... Uh, and we... you, Patty Lou, you get up on top tomorrow and you stay there. Grandfather and I want to call off the race. You want a what? You can call off the bet. You wouldn't lose anything. Well, you've already lost something. Your silly southern cracker mind. 
Now, hold on, Geller. We've got a bit of news. The Cartwrights have asked us to stay at the Ponderosa. That's right. They want us to settle down and maybe raise a few colts out of Jeff Davis and earn an honest living. An honest living? You too? Why, she's nothing but a... Mind what you say about my granddaughter. Oh, I am sorry. I forgot I was talking to a lady. A real southern lady. Geller, don't you see? It's another chance for us. I'm begging you to let us have it. Well, you only get one chance in this life, and you had yours a long time ago. One more chance, please. Before... Before it's too late. Listen. You and him, you had your plantation, and you had your mint tulips, and you had your big society balls. But you had them all, and you threw them away. Well, now it's my turn. I'm top dog. Everything I got is bet on that race tomorrow, and if you think I'm gonna throw that away for a couple of silly frauds trying to go straight... Killer, I'm warning you... You can't make me race. Oh, I can't, can't I? There have been too many races, Patty Lou. Too many towns you've been thrown out of. What do you think is gonna happen when the Cartwrights discover the truth about the old colonel and dear sweet Patty Lou? Come, Grandfather. I die. Let's get at it. And there's one more thing. If you two try anything tomorrow, I'll see to it that there isn't one live cart right left to collect a bet. Is that clear? asking for you earlier. Uh, will you tell him that the colonel is indisposed? Yes, Grandfather, I will. Oh, uh, Patty Lou, what happened to us? Now, now, <laughs> everything's going to be all right, darling. I could have killed Gilla for talking to you like that. I could have killed him. Now, now, don't you fret about what Geller says. <laughs> I don't even listen to him. I was lacking the courage. Or I sure would have killed him. Our time will come, Grandpa. Patty Lou, it's all my fault. Yes, well, it now. is. Yes, it is. My drinking, my gambling. Now. It lost the plantation. Killed your mother, it did. Don't talk like that. It's as much my fault as it is yours. No, no. We're two of a kind, Grandpa. No, 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 no. I no, found no, don't talk like that. I want it. I want it excitement and beautiful clothes and travel. I know. I be so selfish and <laughs> foolish to think that I, I could love a man like Geller. I know, I know. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't cry, honey. Don't cry. <laughs> you try and get some sleep, Grandpa. Just go to sleep. Yeah, I'll, I'll get some sleep.
don't look so unhappy. Grandpa, what if I lose? What if something happens to the Cartwrights because... Now you leave that to me. But I want you to ride lightning a day as you've never ridden before. Grandpa, what are you going to do? Yeah, uh, don't worry none. But I will if you don't tell me. Yeah, I assure you, it'll be nothing rash. Very dear to me, Grandpa. Yeah, well, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> now, you've got to win this race for Patty Lou. It is your race today, Lightning. Don't forget that, huh? About time, boys. Take care of the bets, Clem, huh? They're mighty heavy. Street there by the buggy. Well, he's got a rifle. And if Joe is first over that finish line, he is going to drop him right under that banner. See Hoss there? Well, Larcher, there. It's gonna drop him in the excitement. The crowd noise ought to cover up the gunshot. And I'm gonna take care of Papa Cartwright. You'll never get away with this. Oh, yes, I will. We are gonna grab the money and get out of here before the excitement dies down. We're gonna leave you and the Colonel to face the mob, and I think just possibly they're liable to be in a hanging mood. So think it over. right? Thanks. You're gonna need it. Well, that fancy breeding sure does change the appearance of a horse, don't it? Light me up, horse. I don't know, Joe. It's, it's going to be a race, I can tell you that. Well, don't look so worried, brother. I hate to beat a pretty girl like Patty Lou, but I just don't have any choice. Neither do I, little Joe. I'm afraid I'm really going to have to daylight you. Good luck. Good luck to you, little Joe. Yeah, good luck to both of you. Are you all set? You bet. All set. Patty Lou's acting sort of funny, not like her old self. Patty Lou? Yeah. Well, she was nervous with the beginning of the race and all. I think there's more to it than that. Huh? What do you mean? That horse she's riding. He ain't Jeff Davis. He 
talking about? I'm talking about a ringer. That's what I'm talking about. That horse is a lot longer between the stifle and the hock, and he's a lot faster. I can tell where he took off. I couldn't believe that they'd run a ringer in on us. I ain't saying they did, but I ain't saying they didn't either. That burn it. Patty Lou would have to know about it. She wouldn't let nobody near that horse but me. I'm the only one that ever did take a real good close look at him. Where's the colonel? He was here just about to I don't know. I'll, I'll take this side. You take this side. We gotta find him. Kayla, I must talk with you. Not now, you old fool. Right now. What is this, Fairchild? Yeah, we can't talk here. Around the air. your mind. Now, Keller, I want you to get out of town before this race is over and take your men with you. I can't go through with it. You're in this up to your ears. Do you want to see your granddaughter go to jail? You know dang well I don't. But I don't want to see the Cartwrights hurt either. So make up your mind pretty quick. All right, Colonel. You win. They'll take all the money and they'll kill you and horse and little Joe. Who are you talking about, Colonel? Who? Giller and the, the others. Colonel? Uh, uh, uh. Seen Paul or the Colonel? No, I haven't seen him, Hoss. Pay up, Doc. Hurry They're coming home. The gray's still leading by one length.
Colonel, uh, this is a uh, draft in the San Francisco Bank in full payment for Jeff Davis and Lightning. Are you sure now, Ben? Well, I'll tell you the way I look at it now. Clancy needs a couple of stable mates. And you never know when one of the family may want to start a whole string of racing horses. <laughs> well, they'll sure have a good start. <laughs> well, Ben, what is there left to save for two old friends like you and me? Something I've wanted to save and haven't. It's been good to see you. I abuse your hospitality, oh, Ben. No. It won't do for me to ask you a forgiveness. Uh, we've known each other too long for that kind of talk. We're friends. Good friendship. And I thank you for that, Ben. I thank you kindly. Hoss? Hoss? Weren't you even going to come and say goodbye? Oh, I sure was, Patty Lou, but I was, I was looking for your going away present. And, and I found her over there under a bench. And she said she'd sure like to go with you. If you don't turn into a fair riding man someday. Well, thank you. That's very kind. Of course, you got a lot to learn. But with a little bit of perseverance, there's no telling what might happen. Take good care of him, Jeff Davis. Bye, Lightning. Well, what's this? I didn't steal him, Mr. Cartwright. Hoss gave it to me. <laughs> Hazel, you going a long trip? Thank you. <laughs> you know, Hazel, you look like an intelligent little one. Yes, sir, you look like you had a lot of sense, yeah. I wonder if we could teach her to talk. Grandfather! <clears throat> Get out. <laughs> Whoa, goodbye. <laughs> so long. Howdy, stranger. Howdy. You, uh... Where you heading? That's my business, mister. Well, I guess it's my business, too, seeing as how this is my property. This is your spread, huh? That's right. Well, I didn't mean to be short with you, mister. I've been riding a long way. I guess this dust is just... Right out in my good nature. It's, uh, it's not too cold, but it's wet. Help yourself. Thanks. Appreciate it. This the way to Virginia City? Yeah, just over the hill, you pick up the road. When you come to the fork, you bear right. How far is it? Oh, but now it's right. That's about all me and my horse got left in us. You plan on staying in Virginia City? Yeah, I plan to stay there. As long as it takes me to get done what I've got to do. Didn't mean to be trespassing. That's right. You rest your horse just as low as you want it. Good luck. Same to you, mister. I sing a song of pain and blood The ballad of the Ponderosa I sing of a man dead in the mud Neath the blood tree of the Ponderosa Doug Preston died in innocence Swinging broken against the skies 
Not a word of truth for him was spoken. Oh, damn Ben Cartwright, damn his righteous eyes. You learn something new every day. Now, as long as we three have been having lunch together, this is the first time I knew our prosecuting attorney had a sense of humor. Thank you, Martin. It looks like I'm going to need a sense of humor. If this town stays as peaceful as it has been, there won't be any need for a prosecuting attorney. Oh, don't worry, Dave. Maybe Ben or one of his boys can arrange to get into a little trouble, oh. and then you can become the public defender. Yeah, sure. <laughs> How soon before Roy Coffey gets back from his vacation? Oh, about a week or so. You know, I practically had to file out a warrant against him to get him to take this month off. <laughs> that old hard nosy thinks Virginia City just can't get along a day without him. <laughs> well, let's not tell him what a good job Deputy Sims has been doing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, entertainment at lunchtime. This town's getting more and more like San Francisco. Well, come on over here, young man. I see you made it without too much trouble. Yes, sir, I did. No trouble at all. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? Good. Well, just about anything's all right with me. Well, in that case, I'll do a favor to man. I sing a song of pain and hate Of a town full of death and lies Doug Preston was lynched cause they couldn't wait. Oh, damn Ben Cartwright, damn his righteous eyes. Frank Stanley was murdered on a lonely night. Ben Cartwright called the truth a lie. Doug Preston was the only one in sight. Dave Sinclair said he had to die. Judge Borman sat with icy eyes. Doug Preston would not go free. No justice under frowning skies. Just blood on the roots of the hanging tree. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I seem to have picked an unpopular tune. Who are you? Coulter's my name. Coulter Preston. Preston? That's a pretty famous name around here, ain't it? Boy, that was a long time ago. It's forgotten by now. Well, I ain't forgot it. You see, I'm Doug Preston's son. Y'all seem mighty interested in my song. How about you, Cartwright? You want to hear some more? I, I apologize, gentlemen. All right, young man, this is quite enough. I run this hotel, and you're disturbing my guests. Wait a minute. Mr. Simpson, I think Mr. Sinclair, Judge Bowman and I would like to hear this young man out. Well, well, what do you know? All three together. The three men responsible for my father's death. I don't have to listen to this. That's right, Judge, you don't. Why don't you just lynch me like you did my pa? No one condoned that lynching. But they still claimed he was guilty, and that's a lie. Another man killed Frank Stanley, and that man went free. While my father was lynched by a mob for a crime he didn't commit. Would an innocent man break jail before his trial was over? My father tried to get away because he knew he didn't have a chance with a so-called eyewitness and a hanging judge waiting for him. I'm sorry, man. I've had just about enough. 
That's all right, Judge. You just run along. But just remember, I'm going to keep singing that song. I got my rent paid up at this hotel, and there ain't no law against singing. Why are you doing this? Justice. And the memory of an innocent man. And don't you try and stop me. A guitar ain't no gun, and singing ain't no crime. Good day, gentlemen. Doug Preston ran to save his life. The innocent must be free. His frightened cry stopped late that night when they lynched him on the great blood tree. Frank Stanley was murdered on a lonely night. Ben Cartwright called the truth a lie. Doug Preston was the only one inside. Dave Sinclair said he had to die. Judge Borman said with icy eyes, Doug Preston would not go free. What are you doing up here, Paul? Oh, thinking. Is there something wrong? I don't know. Remember yesterday, I told you I met a young man out here when I was on my way back home? You mean the one with the guitar? Yeah. Yeah, the one with the guitar. That boy's Doug Preston's son. Yeah, Doug Preston, huh? Knew he had a boy. He left here years ago. Yeah, he did. His aunt took him away right after his... right after his father died. But he's back. And he's grown to be a very bitter young man. Oh, not that I can blame him after what he's been through. He believes his father was innocent. Well, I guess it'd be pretty rough for any boy to accept the fact that his father was a murderer. It was a lot more than that, Joe. A whole lot more. He blames his father's death on Judge Borman, Dave Sinclair, and me. That don't make sense. You three didn't want anybody else trying to stop that lynching. Yeah, I know. But there was a lynching. Do you think his father was innocent? Doesn't he know you saw his pa run out of the barn the night of the murder? He refuses to believe it. He won't believe the truth. There's nothing you can do. Well, I was thinking maybe there is. If one of you boys believed in something as strongly as he does, I sure hope there'd be someone that you could talk to about it. I think I'm going to ride into town and see if I can't get through to that boy somehow. I'll see you tonight. Be careful, Paul. Oh, good evening, Mr. Cartwright. Simpson. Is the Preston boy in his room? No, he's not. He's he's probably still running around town singing that song and raising a fuss. He's been at it all day. I guarantee you, Mr. Cartwright, that I'll have him out of this hotel just as soon as he gets back. Why? Has he broken any laws? No, but... Did he uh, do any damage in the hotel? No, Mr. Cartwright. Come over to the chair. What happened to you, boy? Somebody jumped me in the alley. I'll get a doctor. Then you don't have any idea who beat you up, huh? All right, told you, Sheriff. It was too dark to see. Somebody hit me from behind and started working me over. Could have been anybody. I don't have very many friends in this town, Sheriff. You have any ideas, Ben? Well, boy's right. He doesn't have too many friends around here. He's caused an awful lot of unrest since coming, but... I can't think of anybody who'd get angry enough to do this. I know somebody that'd be angry enough. Well, who's that? The man that murdered Frank Stanley. Oh, not just a minute, boy. 
You ride into town and sing a ballad that makes a lot of loose charges and doesn't offer proof of one of them. Oh, come on, Sheriff. You think somebody beat me up just for practice? Uh-uh. I think somebody in this town thinks I'm getting pretty close to the truth, and they're trying to stop me. I waited 15 years to clear my father's name. The only way anybody's gonna stop me now is to kill me. There's a bitter young man, Ben. Yeah. Well, he has a right to be. Oh, that lynching was 15 years ago. It was wrong, the whole town knows that, but it's over and done with now. The boy's father would have hung anyway. He was guilty. Yeah, I guess he was. I, I should have thought so then. Well, but Ben, the evidence. Yeah, the evidence. Do me a favor. Ask Judge Borman and Dave Sinclair to meet me at the hotel. Well, it's awful late, Ben. Yeah, it is late. Maybe 15 years late. Gentlemen. Hey, Good evening, Ben. Thank you for coming out so late at night. It's real friendly of you. Yeah, friend or no friend, it better be important, Ben. Well, I think it's important. Somebody beat up the Preston boy tonight. As the sheriff told us. But frankly, I'm not surprised, Ben. The boy was looking for trouble. <laughs> it's only human nature, Ben. People don't want to be reminded of the lynching, so they, they strike out at whatever brings up the memory. That's one possibility. What's the other? Well, I got a... Maybe it's crazy, but... I got a strange notion that maybe... somebody's trying to keep the boy quiet to protect themselves. Judge, I'd like to go back over the trial records. But it was an open and shut case, Ben. You yourself saw Doug Preston come out of the barn after the killing. You had no doubts 15 years ago. I know I didn't. I know. But that boy was beaten up tonight. Judge, maybe we missed something at the trial. I think we owe it to ourselves and to the Preston board to make sure that nothing is overlooked. Well, if you feel that strongly about it, Ben. I do. I do, Judge. I'll stay in town. We can start going over the records first thing in the morning, if that's all right with you. All right. Night, Ben. See you in the morning. Simpson, I'll be staying here the night. Could I have my usual room? Well, certainly, Mr. Cartwright. There you are, sir. I hope there's no trouble. Sure hope not. Right. Harold? What are you doing up this time of night? Mother couldn't sleep. She was sitting by the window. Saw you come in the hotel. She wanted to talk to you. About the Preston boy? Yes. Does she know who he is? No, but she heard him singing. Look, if you could just go upstairs and talk to her. Tell her everything's all right. I'm sure she could sleep then. Yeah, I'm sure. Mother, Ben Cartwright's with me. Ben! Thank you for coming to see me. Sit down. Thank you, Lisa. Well, I hear you've been a bad girl. You haven't been resting as much as you should. Oh, I will. I will. I just wanted to talk to an old friend for a few minutes. Uh, it's good to see you. Who is that boy? The one with the guitar. Who is he, Ben? Oh, just a boy with a guitar. No reason for you to bother about it. I keep telling her that, Mr. Cartwright. There's every reason. Doug Preston was hanged for the murder of my husband. 
Ben, who is that boy? Well, I seem determined to know about it. He's Doug Preston's son. Doug Preston's son? Yep. I guess the town forgot about that boy. Yes, I imagine most of the town did forget. You, uh, you heard him singing. He's convinced that, that his father didn't kill Frank. And, uh, he's just come here to find whoever it was that did, if anybody else did. Do you think it was someone else? No, I find it hard to believe it was anybody else, but... Well, somebody beat up that boy tonight. Why? I see what I've done by telling you? No, you've, you've helped by telling me. It's worse wondering and not knowing. One imagines so many things. Yeah, that's true. It sure is true. Lisa, you get yourself a good night's rest. Thank you, Ben. I will. Good night. singing about the posse. I don't care if he is Preston's kid. It was a good posse. We did what we had to. I was in it. In fact, you were too, weren't you? Yeah, I was in it all right. your songs. As a matter of fact, we don't want you around here no more. You look at me when I'm talking to you. the son of a stinking murderer hanging around this town. Necessary now. What does that mean? The sheriff was in to see us a few minutes ago. He had to lock up the Preston boy last night. Seems he got into a fight in the saloon and did a pretty good job of smashing it up. Yeah, he couldn't pay the damages, so the sheriff's gonna let him cool off for a few hours and then escort him out of town. And that'll be good riddance. Well, whether the boy leaves or not, isn't gonna change anything for him or for us. We've got to make the boy see... See what? To see that the evidence is right? Van Preston was guilty as charged. We all agreed on that 15 years ago. Yes, Dave, we did agree. But maybe we were just a little anxious. If you remember, the man we were trying had already been executed. Go over to the sheriff's office and see what I can do for the boy. Meanwhile, will you fellas start going over the evidence? We've been doing that, Ben. We'll get back to it. Thank you. All right, 
right, boy. Your bail's been paid. You're free to go. Who paid it? Mr. Cartwright. Son, there's work for you to do and a place for you to stay if you want it. You're offering me a job? Why not? There's always room for an extra ranch hand at the Ponderosa. And you look like you've been around cattle, son. You think I'd be fool enough to accept? I'd ride out to the Ponderosa with you. I might never ride back. Why don't you just let me lock him back up, Ben? Leave me alone with him for a bit, would you? Son. Son, I'd like to be a friend. And I reckon you don't believe that, do you? You're right, I don't. But you do want to know about your father, don't you? Whether he was guilty or innocent. I've got the judge and the prosecuting attorney working on the evidence, just in case they missed something 15 years ago. You're doing that? I want the truth as much as you do. I don't believe you. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go with you. But don't expect any thanks for what you're doing. This town still murdered my father. And you're part of this town. <laughs> play the guitar much? Oh, yeah. All the time. We kind of miss it. You're welcome to use that one while you're here. Thanks a lot. I've never had one this good. Where'd you learn to play? Just picked it up. I used to listen to my father a lot when I was real young. He was a fine guitar player. Made up songs by the hour. You, uh, you seem to have the same gift. Oh, no. All my father's songs were happy songs. I bet you could make up a happy song if you tried. Well, there's one thing I'd have to find out first. What's that? What it's like to feel happy. Well, uh, look, you get yourself cleaned up. I'll see it somewhere. Hop sing. That was delicious. You've outdone mm -hmm. yourself again. Young man no like. He eat less than bird. It was fine. I just wasn't very hungry. Don't worry. Mr. Hoss, he finish it all anyway. He only one who eat good. Hop sing stand over hot stove all day. Nobody eat. Pretty soon now Hop sing quit. Hey, don't let him down. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, you said something about going over those records again. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Judge Borman and Dave Sinclair have been working on them all day. I'm going to join them tomorrow. I certainly would like to see those records. I think that'd be a very good idea. Tell you what, we'll go to town together first thing in the morning. Paul, I was sort of figuring on going into town tomorrow anyhow. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, you can ask Dave Sinclair to bring out a copy of the records with him after the ranch. Hey, I'll go with you so you don't get lost. Mm-mm. Huh? Plenty of work for you to do here tomorrow, and don't try to get out of it. Well, in that case, I think I'll turn in. I'll see you in the morning. I think I'll hit it too, Paul. Night. Night, Colter. Good night. Night, Holmes. I guess I better turn in, too. I didn't get much sleep in that jail last night. Uh, Colter, there's something that I... I'd like to ask you. Don't quite know how to put it. I suppose the best way is flat out, man to man. What has made you so sure all these years? 
that your father was innocent? Because he told me. And my father wouldn't lie to me, Mr. Carter. He said he was innocent, and I believed him deep in my heart. you think they'll be here, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, they would be here by now, around 11, I guess. That's really a nice piece. Hey, you've got a good eye, young fella. You know who gave me that? Sam Cole himself. That's a beauty. I've never seen a collection as nice as yours. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. It's an interesting piece. It's a Belgian blunderbuss. And uh, that middle one there, that's, uh, those are two English carriage pistols. Those are buccaneers' pistols up there. Yeah, the pirates used to stick them in their sashes. Oh, I think they're covered. to side, but I think we'd better get him into the sea, Doc Martin. Get some hot water with him. You. you won't be able to lie your way out of it this time, Cartwright. He tried to kill me. You hear? He tried to kill me. Hank? What happened? What's all the excitement? They got Ben Cartwright in there. He tried to kill that singer fella. Ben Cartwright? You heard me. The kid's accusing him of attempted murder. Hey, Hoss, wait a minute. What's going on? They lock him up, Joe? Look, boys, we can't say anything yet. Well, we just asked a simple question. What's the difference? It'll be in the paper, won't it? It's in the paper. You can read about it. I don't understand why you're getting so excited. Now, I've already told you for the tenth time, I'm not trying to keep anything from you. For 15 long years, I've sat at the window, Harold, watching the street down there. I've seen things that nobody else has ever seen. I know things about this town that nobody else will ever know. This afternoon, I saw Ben Cartwright and his two boys ride into town with Doug Preston's boy and Dave Sinclair. I saw them go into the jail. But I didn't see Ben Cartwright come back out. Tell me, Harold. Well, do you know what the doctor said about you getting upset? Tell me, Harold. All right. 
Doug Preston's boys accused Ben Cartwright of trying to murder him. Thank you, Harold. I was just trying to spare you the upset. It'll all blow over. Yes, of course. Don't you think you ought to go to bed now? No, no. You go on to your room. I just want to sit here for a while. was lost for 15 years Ben Cartwright wrote tall and free But now his sons will know my tears As their father swings from the hanging tree I sing a song of pain and blood Cartwright, you're going to die just like my father did. They're saying just because it's Ben Cartwright, it couldn't happen? I didn't say it couldn't happen. I just said I don't think it did. Well, what the kid says makes a lot of sense to me. Ben beat him up to scare him off, and when that didn't work, he tried to shoot him. What do you think you are, the judge or something? I got a right to say what I think. Now, not everybody around here thinks the Cartwrights are as pure as you do. To get that big, you got to tromp on somebody along the way, and that's a fact. Shh. Come, took the kid out to the ranch. Can you explain that? Hush up, will you? And then, Mr. Cartwright, you, uh, you not only posted bail for this boy, but you went even further and uh, invited him out to the ranch. Can you explain why you did this? Well, I... I felt badly for the boy. He was a, it seemed to me, a, a bitter young man who was destroying himself, I thought, because of a mistaken idea he'd been living with for 15 years. I didn't make any mistake. I've already proved what I came here to find out. Go on, Mr. Cartwright. I, I figured that I could get through Dakota. The truth was mine. Have him live with a family. Something which I guess he didn't have a chance to do before. Have people around him who... who weren't filled with hatred. You say, uh, have people around him. Your sons, is that what you mean? Yes, that was... that was my intent. Well, on the day in question, were your sons present? No, sir, they were not. Then uh, you and Coulter Preston were alone to Ponderosa. Yes, sir, that's correct. He even sent little Joe on a wild goose chase to the other end of the ranch, and he sent Hoss into town on some kind of errand, and, and there wasn't even a hand on the place. A young man, you will remain quiet until you're questioned, or I shall instruct the deputy to remove you from the courtroom and hold you in contempt. Now, Mr. Cartwright... On the night of the previous assault, 
You admit, then, that, uh, that you were in town, that you were in the vicinity of the assault, and at exactly the time it happened. That's right. Then um, you could have been the man who gave Colder Preston a beating. If you're referring to the time and place, yes, I could have done it, but I didn't. But he could have. He's answered the question. Well, what kind of hearing is this? Are you just going to listen to what you want to hear? Is this the kind of trial you gave my father? Order. Order. Lisa. She insisted, Judge. I couldn't stop her. You don't miss a bit, do you, Cartwright? Bringing in the widow of the murdered man to get sympathy for you. Sit down. I have a right to have my say. What's the matter, Cartwright? Afraid of the truth? Did you see my father coming out of the barn that night, or did he see you? Deputy, will you sit this boy down in that chair? Isn't that the truth, Cartwright? Go ahead. All right, come on, boy. Come on, sit down. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Sit down. If he gets up or opens his mouth again, take him out of here and lock him up. Doggone it, David. It just don't make sense. If Paul intended to shoot Colder, why'd he wait till me and you got there to see it? The witness will please answer the prosecutor's question. I repeat. As soon as we arrived, we heard a gunshot. We ran into the house. Ben Cartwright was there. Colder Preston was gripping his side. He'd been wounded by a gunshot. Well, Haas. Speak up, Haas. Wasn't that the way it was? Yeah, that's, that's right. You'll, you'll have to speak up so the court can hear. I say, yeah, yes, that's right. Your Honor, in view of the evidence, I ask that Ben Cartwright be charged with assault and battery, and with assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill. Ben, if you have anything to say, If you have another line of defense. Ben, your only defense so far has been your conviction that the boy's lying. He is lying, Judge. He may not know he's lying, but he is. What Please. Order. How can you be so sure, Lisa? Because my son and I have lived with a lie for 15 years. I'm not going to let you do this. You'll let me, Harold. In a way, it'll be like getting out of prison. Should have been said 15 years ago. It should have been said the night my husband was killed. I was in the barn that night, Ben. That's what you didn't see. Doug Preston and I were in the barn and my husband came in. My husband was a violent man. You knew that, Ben. But for my sake, you, you tried to ignore it, but you knew it. There were other women, a lot of drinking. I was terrified what he might do to my son in one of his drunken rages. I needed someone that would understand, give me sympathy. We didn't mean it to happen, but we fell in love with each other. We planned to run away together, take our two sons with us. She's lying! Deputy, listen, my father was taking me away with him. He would have told me if he had any interest in that woman. You're a liar, woman! Yeah. Frank began to suspect us. We were in the barn that night and Frank came in. 
There was a horrible argument. Doug Preston drew his gun and fired. No, that's not so! Doug ran out of the barn. That's when Ben saw him. I hid in the loft and I saw Ben come in and look down at my husband. Lying there dead. Doug was afraid. He was guilty, and he was afraid. He told me he was going to try to break out of jail, and I, I, I encouraged him. We'd meet someplace. I told him I'd take care of his son, Coulter. But he wanted the boy with him. If he hadn't stopped that night to pick up the boy, the posse might never have caught him. Don't lie, Calder. Please don't lie. Haven't enough lives been ruined by lies already? <gasps> you have anything to say for yourself now, Calder? I just beat my head against the wall, pretending I was beating my head against Ben Cartwright, beating the truth out of him. I had to know the truth. I had to know the truth. Well, you know it now. Charges against Ben Cartwright are dismissed. Court stands adjourned. anybody this much trouble, especially you. He lied to you because of his love for you. Forget the lie. Remember the love. That's what I remember. That's what I was trying to protect. said to me that he, he'd never sung a happy song because he didn't know how. Maybe he will now. Sure hope so. Let's go. game. Ben, that's game. That's two beers you owe me. Come on, how about another one? That young son of mine should have been back by now. Oh, boy, it's going to take him quite a spell round up all them horses. Well, it doesn't have to take this long, does it? Oh, Ben, quit being an old mother hen. You know little Joe can take care of himself. Here he comes now. Joe, what do you, what do you got that saddle roll around you for? Because I can't sit down. Why not? 
I got sh shot. Shot? Where? Right in the middle of the Ponderosa. Help, help me down. I'm here. No, wait. Wait a minute. That's easy. Easy. Who shot you, Joe? I don't know. Well, what happened? I was, I was running towards this fellow, see? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? Were you running backwards? No, I wasn't running backwards. A bullet ricocheted off a rock near Willow Creek. Well, just don't stand there. Do something. Like what? Like go after him. Go after who? The man that shot me. Well, who was he? I told you I don't know. Joseph, Joseph. Just calm down. Now. Let's calm down. make some sense out of this. Come on, I'll sit down over there. Pa, pa I, I told you. I can't, I can't sit down, Pa. What's this? Whose hat is this? It's his hat. Whose hat? The man that... The man that shot me All right, hat. now quiet down, everybody. If a crime has been committed... If a like... crime has been committed? Did you hear that? If a crime has been committed. Now, hold everything, Joe. Just give me the facts, will you? Give me the facts. All right, here are the, the facts. I'm riding along, Pa. Peacefully. I'm riding along. I ride over a ridge. There I see a man lassoing one of our horses. I get off my horse and I start to go towards him. He shoots at me. I shoot at him. He shoots at me. I think, I think I hit him in the left shoulder. I, I know where he hit me. And I I shot that hat off his head. <laughs> Seems like you fellas are playing a little game of heads and tails. What's <laughs> <laughs> your name in here? Jay Reichman. Hmm. Does that mean anything to you? Never heard of him. What did he look like, Joe? I don't know. He's too too far away. Well, I'll do some investigating as soon as I can. As soon as you can? How soon is that? Well, I don't know. I gotta meet Sheriff Coffee in Carson City tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, Joe. Well, look, if you if you're just gonna let murderers get away scot free, maybe we could use a new deputy around here. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Wait a minute. Could you send uh, the other deputy? Well, he's got the measles, Ben. Got the measles. I'm sorry, I can't do anything right now. Deputize somebody else? Well, like who? Want to give it a try, Hoss? That's all right, brother. Forget it. Forget it. Let the man who tried to murder your brother, your own brother, your own flesh and blood, let him ride away. Let him get away, Scott Free. Forget I asked you. I'll swear you in. Do you? I do. You are. I think I'll, uh, go on a house. So, so my feet. for a fellow by the name of Reitman, Jay Reitman. You ever hear of him? Nope. Thanks. Welcome.
Madame. Trust a man Charlie don't like. I reckon this is Charlie, huh? That's Charlie. Well, maybe he just don't know me. Uh -huh. Neither do we. Yeah, name's Cartwright. Horse Cartwright. Ponderosa Cartwrights? That's right. Maybe wrong. What you doing on our patch of land? I'm uh, looking for a fellow by the name of Reichman. Well, I can open, fellas. Which Reichman? Just Jay Reichman's all I know. You a friend of his? No, uh, as a matter of fact, I ain't never seen him. I'm, I'm a special deputy. I just want to ask him some questions. Aiming to arrest him? Well, that, that sort of depends. So, um, well, you don't know Reichman, huh? No, I ain't got much of a description of him, neither. Well, <laughs> maybe we can, uh, Help him out, huh, boys? I'd appreciate that. Well, Reichman has got two heads, each one of them meaner than the other one. Got four arms that move like sidewinders and four legs that stomp like mules. Uses a wagon tongue for a toothpick and he can shoot a bumblebee in a behind at 400 yards. Just a ordinary sort of fellow then, huh? Might say that. Been a big help. Thanks. Up in the hills, we got a lot of wild hogs. Wild hogs got big noses. Sometimes they put their noses in the wrong place. And when they do, they get bit. I can see that news travels fast around here. Yeah, well, especially bad news. Meaning what? Meaning don't be a hog. Hey, we don't allow no dogs around here. He ain't mine. <laughs> I wasn't talking about him. You know, this is really and truly a nice, friendly little town. Yes, sir. I've been here 20 minutes. And in those 20 minutes, I've been snapped at, snipped at, and snarled at. And I got a funny feeling that if I hang around much longer, I'm liable to get shot at. I came into this town looking for a fellow I'd never seen before named Jay Reichman. Know very little about him. One thing, he likes to shoot at fellers. Another thing is he likes to freeload on other people's brood mares. I got another funny feeling. I got a funny feeling I just found him. Put your gun up there on the bar and slide it down. Move. You too, buddy. On the bar. What's your name? 
Reichman. J. Your name, not your initial. J for Jeb. Yours? <laughs> Judd. Well, looks like I hit the jackpot, don't it, boys? I didn't know your can came in bunches, but if there's a dozen of you, I'm going to take you back to Virginia City and you're going to stay on trial. Virginia City? Oh, that's about 80, 100 miles from here. I haven't been out of town half a mile in a year. Me neither. That's good. You can tell it to the judge. And now, wait a minute. I don't see any sense in that. Judge just told you you hadn't been with miles of that place. And I told you the same thing. And it seems to me that's about the end of it. Besides, nobody got killed, did they? That's right. Nobody did get killed, but how did you know that? Oh, he wasn't telling you, he was just asking. Well, well from now on, I'm going to do the asking. And you boys are going to do the answering. Now, let's get over and see the sheriff. I'm sure you've had occasion to meet him several times. Uh, now, just a minute. You got any proof of what you've been saying? I got all the proof I need, buddy. Now, get moving. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like your percentage is gone. Got a nice even fight right here. Ain't you fellas a little bit young for all this rough stuff? Yeah, but you see, we we're gonna get older and you mightn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, how you want it? For uh, keeps or for fun? All right. All right. <laughs> I'm getting just about sick and tired of this town, and you. And that goes for you, too, Charlie. And all this talk. Now, come on. This month, this place has been busted up. Now, oh, don't we always clean it up for you? Give me a gun. All right, you do get. We're just getting our irons, Ma. Ma'am, I sure would like they to. They won't go far. Well, they're all heated up. There'd just be more trouble. You, uh, you ought to relax some yourself. Now, just cool off. Hey, let me see Fat Joe's gun. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Be a real little man now, huh? Come on, come on, come on, come on. You look like a real nice man. 
What I can see of you. What are you doing picking on those two little boys? Two little boys? Ha! That's a laugh. Meaner than a couple of wild bulls, those two little boys, as you call them. This is a real small town, and they are young, and maybe there ain't too much excitement around here for them. Uh, they work for you? Well, that's a hard question. Sometimes I don't know whether they work for me. I work for them. I guess it's a little bit of both. I'm their mother. Ma'am, I hate to tell you this, but one of your boys is guilty of attempt horse theft and assault with a deadly weapon. Well, you got, uh, you got positive proof that one of my boys did what you say? No, well, I ain't got proof positive, but there's lots of circumstantial evidence. Any horses took? No, ma'am. Any money took? No. Anybody got shot? Yeah. Yeah, somebody got shot. My little brother got shot. That's who got shot. Where is he shot? Well, he shot in the... He was shot where the person meets the saddle. Well, I don't sound too serious to me. Well, how'd you like to get shot in the... Aren't your brother all right now? Well, he can't sit down. Well, you know... You look like a real reasonable young man. And on the basis of what you have just told me, mister, you can go shinny up a gum tree. You think I'm going to turn over one of my boys to you or to anybody else? You are wrong. Mister, your case is a bottle short. Uh, Mel, why don't we let the court decide that? Strange court in a strange town. But the judge scratching the sheriff's back and the sheriff scratching the judge's back. They're both up for election, and the local people are breathing down their necks. Man, would have a fine chance in a court like that. Besides, in my opinion, just ain't much of a crime. My boys are young and they're feisty and they're a little bit rougher than most, but they ain't criminals. The meeting's now adjourned. Ma'am, may I just suggest that they, they try to clear themselves? Is your brother a young fella? Yes, sir. He's got lots of time to sit down. Freddy, you seen my gun? Here. Ah, very good. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> I poked into that lady while ago and knocked off. Charlie don't like. Pretty lively little ruckus over there. It's all most of it from here. Didn't go over though. Can't stand the sight of blood. Chaw? No, thanks. You ought to. I've been chawing since I was seven. Tobacco kills the germs so as your gums don't rot. You in uh, some sort of trouble? Nope. Just doing my job. I'm in town to pick up a fellow by the name of Reitman. Well, then you are in trouble. Which one you after, Jeb or Judd? Well, there's sort of a problem there. I, I don't know which one I'm after. Well, whoever it is you want, whatever was it he did. Well, he tried to steal a horse and he shot a man. Kill him? Nope. Hmm. Too bad. Could have used the business. You sheriff? 
Nope. Just a special deputy that sent in the town to pick up Reichman and take him back to stay on trial, that's all. And you can't figure out which one you want. Is that about it? That's about it. Well, that is a problem. All right, all right. Now, the Reichman boys, they ain't killers. Of course, there ain't a hen house in town they ain't thieved. And... <laughs> Neighbors all grease their pigs when they see the Reichman boys coming. Maybe they steal just out of plain cussedness. They ain't never thieved a bank or shot anybody or anything important like that. They're just trying to be real outlaws and just can't seem to make it. Yeah. Give them time. You might be right. They yeah, mean enough for anything. <laughs> yeah, but Willie May, she keeps them both of them on a right short reign. <laughs> yeah, quite a woman, Willie May. Yeah. You sure you don't want to chow? Oh, you ought to have jaw. Hardens up the jaw muscles. Could you tell me where the sheriff's office is at? Well, half the time it's in the jail, and the other half the time it's in the saloon. Now, if he ain't in the jail, he's drunk. If he ain't in the saloon, he's broke. Well, now he ain't in the saloon, so he must be in the jail. It's down the street. Thanks. It won't do you much good, though. Sheriff, he's a real character. He ain't normal like the rest of us folks here. And putting him in charge of the hoose is like putting the fox in charge of the chickens. <laughs> he likes his liquor, ain't shot his gun in five years except maybe to chase off a few crows, and he's yellower than a dry cornstalk. <laughs> Otherwise, he's a, he's a pretty nice fella. <laughs> you sure you don't want a chaw? No, thanks. Have it your own way. Now, you, uh, you need any business, though, you call on me. Uh, I shave them cleaner and keener and bury them deeper and cheaper. Thanks. Welcome. Sheriff? I guess I am. What's on your mind? Well, I... I got sort of a problem. You got a problem? I got sciatica, my wife's got the croup, and I ain't been paid in four months. And you got a problem. <laughs> well, let's have it. Well, I... I've been deputized to come here and pick up a man for questioning. Questioning for what? For horse thieving and shooting at a man. Who do you claim shot him? A fellow by the name of Reichman. Just one man named Reichman? That's right. Well, now, that's different. We got two Reichmans here. Which one was it? I, I don't know. He don't know. What do you think of that, Skinny? When you find out, Come back. If I do, will I get a warrant? No. Why not? Until I get paid my wages, I don't do nothing. Well, I reckon that sort of leaves me on my own, don't it? And good luck to you. Oh, uh, if there's any shooting, don't expect me to come a-running. No. Don't worry. I won't. And by the way, you get this varmint off my back, or pop goes a weasel. Thanks. Welcome. You still in town? You know, Freddie, a peculiar thing about this town. You look at it from a distance, and it's as pretty as a wildflower. But you get in close and take a good look at it, and it takes on the appearance of a cactus. 
It's thorny, sticky, and poisonous. You talk real pretty. Yeah. Freddie, maybe you can talk pretty. I need some information. Sorry, we just plumb ran out of information. Freddie, where do the Ragman boys hang out? Look, like I said, we're fresh out of information, but we just got in a big supply of advice. You're too nosy for your own. Uh, don't hit me, mister. Don't you hit me. I'm a sick man. Yeah. Yep, you sure are at that. That's using your head, young fella. Too many people using their fists around here. Now, how about a touch? Might ease your temper. No, thanks. Well, it tastes like formaldehyde. Why do you drink it? It's all you've got. You talk to the sheriff? Yep. Is that right? Right as rain. And I guess you'll saddle up and trot on home, huh? No, sir. No, sir. I came here to do a job, and I'm going to do it. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. You know, I still think it was the Reichman stole them bronze handles off that coffin I had sent up here for old Colonel Atchison. Well, they might act a little rough at times, but they're local boys and they're good customers. I wish there was customers of mine. Well, good luck. Maybe them Reichmans will get buggy whipped after all. Well, you can't fish a stream that's dry. I ain't been able to locate them. No line on them, huh? <sighs> nope. This town is full of advice, but dang little information. Well, I'll tell you now. You go out that door, you ride south for a mile and a half, turn left at Superstition Fork for a half mile, and you'll see what looks like an overgrown outhouse, standing there mean and nasty behind a stand of wild oaks. There's also a rickety barn filled with stolen saddles and, and probably a rebranded steer, too. Uh, there's no telling what or who you might find out there. Are you sure you won't have a touch just to get you going? No, thanks. Well, uh, if anybody should turn up dead, and I hope it ain't you, uh, I'd appreciate the business. I know. Cheaper and deeper, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> expect to be a deputy around here, you'd better settle down, boy. Oh, 
hanging around here for? Well, I'm just listening, ma'am. Just listening. No, oh, ma, he was trespassing. We got a right to do whatever. Stop. Now, you have been butting these two little boys around like a billy goat, and you've been making serious charges. Now, let's just quit all this butting around and have a showdown right now. Well, that suits me fine, ma'am. That's fair enough. Oh, come on, Ma. Just let me, let me just hit him once. Shut up. Let him down. something and they claim that they they didn't somebody's lying i stand with my boys now you are on trial here not them well ma'am it appears that these little boys of yours are closer than a couple of buckwheats but one of them well i heard all that before uh you got any evidence yes i sure do i didn't come all this way without some evidence that old man this happened this happened Found at the scene of the crime, Exhibit A, Your Honor. Well, all it is is a hat with a hole in it. Mm hmm. And with a name in it, J. Reichman. Jeb, you lose a hat? No, ma'am. Judd? No, ma'am. Ma'am, that hat is pretty damaging evidence. Well, somebody could have stole it. Well, when did all this take place? Two days ago, Tuesday. Jeff, where were you on Tuesday? Well, seems to me I was back in the barn all day, uh, soaping up some saddles. Judd? Hmm. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, I, I think I was in town uh, fighting Roger Jones. Oh, that was Monday I fought Raj. Well, you better do some remembering. Yeah. I know where I was. I, I was down near the creek chasing some stray sheep. Well, you know that we don't own no sheep. Yeah, but I figure it's about time we did. Uh, well, pickings get pretty lean around here at times, Ma. Ma? Now, this is the third or fourth time that I told you. Maybe we'll starve, but we'll starve honest. I did it for you, Ma. I suppose you shot that man for me, too. Oh, Ma, I didn't. I asked Jeb. I had my hat on, too, didn't I, Jeb? Well. Now, son, I want the truth. To be fair, Judd, I... I remember seeing you all right, like like when you come in the bar and all tuckered out and kind of breathing hard and. Yeah, yeah, but that that, that was from no, that was from chasing that sheep, Jeb. Now I was. But, but what I don't remember is. I don't remember. Did you have your hat on? Oh, now, Jim, Jim, please, you got to remember. Now I might have taken my hat off later or something, but I had it when I came back. I had it on. I think hard, son, and I don't want you to lie. Did he have his hat on or not? Well. Uh... I hate to do this to you, Judd, but I have to tell the truth. Ma, well, I don't think he did. Jeff. Well, take him away. I uh, tried to raise him decent. I, I, uh, I did my best. But I guess when all you got is a piece of scrub ground and no husband. I'm sorry, ma'am. I am. I... What'll happen to him? Well, ain't nothing gonna happen to him because he ain't going. You put that gun away. No, Ma. 
Listen, I didn't try to steal that horse, and I, I didn't gun that man neither. Now, Jeff, you stay here and you help Mark, because I'm leaving. Now, you do like I say. If you're not guilty, like you claim, nothing is going to happen to you. But if you run off, I swear to you, you'll never be welcome in our land again. He's too young, or like he's too old. I don't know. All right, mister, he's yours. Ma'am, as it turns out, he's not the one I want. What happened to that arm, Jeb? Well, uh, just a scratch. Um, scratched on a tree. It looks like a bullet wound to me. It's a burn. My little brother said he might have winged him in the left arm. Jeb? Well, all right, I shot him, but I didn't mean to. I was just trying to scare him off. About that mare, Ma, I just figured we could use her. Yeah, I know you did it for me. But you let your own brother. No, I wasn't going to let him down. I was going to chase him along behind, behind the trail, you know. And then I was going to bushwhack him. Judd, you believe that? No, Ma. You try to lay the blame on me, huh? You try to lay... Hey. Boys! Hey, boys! No, let him be! Oh, it's okay. Are you gonna take one of my boys away and I don't even know your name? Cartwright, man. Paul Cartwright. Ponderosa Cartwright? Yes, sir. That's it. Want a drink? Oh, wow. Yes, sir. I'd like one. Thank you. Here, your Paul's a real fine man. Well, we think so. Yeah, you're lucky. You're real lucky to have a paw like Ben Cartwright. Got them all? No. Every boy ought to have them all. But if he had his choice, I reckon every boy would rather have a paw. <clears throat> It is real hard raising a couple of wild buffaloes. You know, boy needs a man. Teach him how to hunt and fish and work and ride and be a man instead of an animal. Girl, it's different. Ma'am, don't you think oh, I ought to... No, 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 they... That happens all the time. You know, my husband, bless him... He had a real quick temper, just like them, and he had a hard fist and a dry throat, but he never drew a gun on a man in his life, and I sure do hate to see one of my boys starting. You know, maybe it's a good thing that this thing happened now. Make your mistakes when you're young enough to fix them. What'll happen to him? Well, ma'am, I don't know what the what the penalty is for shooting a man in the well, where he where his person meets the saddle. <laughs> yeah, they it wasn't no horse stolen, and, and the shooting was accidental. My little brother said that. So maybe they won't do nothing more than just find him. Well, I just hope it's a little one. We just spent our last four dollars on books. I, I was hoping that I could teach him how to read. Yeah. You know, Hoss, that is the first time that Judd ever whipped Jeb. Well, maybe that's because he knew he was right, ma'am. Son, here's something for you and Hoss to eat on the road. Well, we better get on the way. It's going to be dark before long. 
You mad at me, are you, Jen? No, Jim. Bye, Ma. Y'all take good care of her now. We'll be waiting for you, son. I hated to make such a nuisance of myself, Miss Reichman. You've been mighty cooperative. Thanks. Welcome. Oh. You'd have been in a whole lot of trouble. Well? How's that? Well, why don't you just take out your gun and shoot at something? Shoot at what? Oh, anything. Like that? Uh, but I, I put the. Well, I reckon you must have fixed it. Yeah, I did that, Jim. Let me tell you something, boy. I don't wear this gun in a pair of diapers. I check it and I clean it every night. A gun can either be your best friend or your worst enemy, and don't you forget it. You got to learn to respect them, Jim. That's one thing among many you've got yet to learn. Yeah, I know. Boy, there's a whole mess of things I gotta learn. Yeah. You know, nobody in our family ever been in jail before. Like my pa, I, I never shot anybody in my life. See, I shot towards your brother, not at him. I was scared, I guess. Must have been Ricochet got him. Well, I'm sure glad he ain't hurt bad. Funny thing is, one gets hurt the most is Ma. She always tried so hard to do good with me and Judd. You know, Jeb, that was a dead burn fool thing I just done. Shooting up your hat. The only evidence I got. We can't have much of a case against you without it, can we? Well, I reckon that, but one thing to do, and that's let you go. You get on back to your ma, boy. But I want you to remember this. If you ever do anything to hurt your ma again, boy, I'll come after you personally. And you'll have to answer to me. You remember that. Now get. See you back. Howdy, Paul. Joe. Well, uh, how'd it go? Did you, you find him? Well, in a way. What do you mean, in a way? Well, I mean, I found him, but he got away. That's what I mean. How come? Well, he... He was big, boy, and mean. Oh, so I... I just don't think you were cut out to be a lawman. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon I wasn't at that, Paul. But I'll tell you, I learned something. I learned to be grateful. For what? To you, for being such a good Paul. To Joe and me and Adam. Teaching us how to hunt and fish and ride and work and just stuff like that. Just. Everything in general. Just grateful. Anything wrong with that? No. No, there isn't. I, I, I want you to know how grateful I am to you for what a wonderful job you've done for me. Thanks.
that move. 